Do you know personally of any scientists or engineers that are in the process of developing new technology, robots or otherwise, to deal with Fukushima, and does any of it seem hopeful or promising to you? Right, okay. Um, uh, no is the answer to that. Uh, I, I think that, um, that all of the work that had been done with robots to try and sort out Chernobyl showed that it's impossible to use uh, robots because the problem is that the electronic systems that robots work on cannot sustain, um, uh, they cannot function when the radiation fields get too high. Because the radio see, when radiation impinges on, 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 on a substance, on, on a, an immaterial, what it does is it creates electrons. That's why it's called ionizing radiation. It ion, it, it, it's absorbed by the material, and it ionizes the material, which means that it kicks electrons out of the material. Now, the problem is that robots work on electrons. Your computer works on electrons. All of these chips, all of the, all the electronic chips that, that, that you, people use, are all, uh, are all work on electrons, I and mean, you can't have a system where the electrons are just randomly being kicked out all over the place because, you know, ultimately the, the whole thing gets scrambled, and that's what they found in in, in um, Chernobyl. And they had a, they had a, they had they tried everything. They tried the uh, German, Germans had some very fancy robots, and then they tried uh, robots from somewhere else, and they built their own robots. And none of the robots worked. They worked up to the point where they got into the high radiation fields, and they just went mad, went round in circles, and sort of fell off the side. That's why, in the end, in Chernobyl, they had to send men in. They called them bio robots, and they just they just called up twenty thousand men from the reserve army lists. And they, they, they put roofing lead around them and, and sent them in to pick up this stuff by their bare hands and throw it, throw it over the side. And, of course, they all died. Uh, you won't hear that. I mean, the international nuclear industry says that, says that nobody really died after Chernobyl except a few of the firemen right at the beginning. But there, there's an enormous number of, of uh, people who died because the Russians sent in these, these young men. And the young men just got huge radiation effects, and then they died, or mostly died before they were 40. Terrifying. But this can't happen in Japan, and the robots won't work. So as I say, there's nothing you can do. They just have to dig around it, isolate it, put up a big notice saying, mankind's folly, and, and keep it cool for, you know, for another thousand years or however long it is. No, just, 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 just give, this is much more important, one, because one you, everybody one, can become one, infertile in one generation. One sound bite, okay. one sound bite. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are, that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout, uh, the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation, but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident, and this is quite terrible. And in, any, in many ways, it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born. And some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so the, the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the the sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago, which showed that Israeli men had had very low sperm count, and that over the previous ten years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate. By the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile, and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. 
It's as bad as that. And we are, so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation uh, come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, 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 the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is pro almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with the, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're bought. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, it, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like th throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who worked for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I've studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all that we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Also. Yeah.